Lost again, going back around Dreaming of a time when I get things right Lost in the shadows of a million stars Shouldn't they in my mind near and far Shouldn't they at all just tell me where you are Send a prayer if I'm out Hey everybody, it's Mickey, and in today's video we are setting up our extended pantry. I'm going to show you how I figured out what to store, how to organize it, and how to keep track of it all. So if you are new here and you like DIY, decor, organizing, cooking, and planning videos, I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe. I put out new videos every week about all things home. I want to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I have been working on building up my pantry. I got caught off guard at the beginning of the pandemic and I vowed I would never feel that unprepared again. So today I'm going to share with you the system that I put together for myself in hopes that it will encourage you to put together your own system. For those of you who are unfamiliar, we are in the lower level of my home. This is where I have my food storage room. I have a pretty small kitchen that really doesn't have a lot of extra space for storage. So my husband built this room for me down here for all of my extras. So not only is this room for our pantry, but it's also where I keep a lot of my, you know, my smaller appliances that I don't use all the time. I have my crock pots here and my big roast pan. I also store things like my food processor and our coffee maker. You know those kinds of things that you don't use all the time but you need them you know pretty close at hand. Now we have a smaller cabinet right here that this used to be my teaching cabinet but I have moved all of my teaching supplies to the other side of the basement. So inside here is where I store a lot of my cleaning supplies. I have um, some decor items that I store here. You know those things that you just use seasonally, you don't really need them out all the time. So that is what this little cabinet is for. But today we are going to concentrate on our food storage and our long-term pantry. I thought this would be a good time to do this video because over the last two weeks I have been doing some extra shopping for my pantry. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I have really been working on, you know, keeping a good supply of things on hand and trying to figure out a system that works best for me. So before we get started today, I want to show you the types of containers that I use within my cabinets. These large Sterilite containers you can find at Walmart, you can find them at Target. You can even find them on Amazon and I will try to find links to everything that we talk about today and leave it down below for you. One of the other things that we're going to be using a lot of today are shelf risers. Now these you can also find at Target and Walmart and of course everything you can find on Amazon but these are really helpful for can storage. This allows me to store my cans according to expiration date. The ones that I need to use are always on top of the shelf and the ones that are a little bit further out, I can store underneath. So we have a couple of these that we're going to be using for our canned goods. So let's dive in and get started. So the first thing I did when I wanted to come up with a system for my pantry was to make a list of our family's favorite meals. There's actually a section in my meal planner that I use to make this list. And I came up with about 50 meals that I make, you know, over a rotating, say 90 day basis. And from that list, I jotted down all the basic pantry ingredients for every recipe. And this became my pantry's essential list. These were the things that I wanted to always have on hand so that I would be able to make meals for the family for about four weeks. So it is really important to me not to waste food and not to panic buy. So I wanted to have something that I can keep track of the inventory that I have in my pantry, something that will help me check the expiration dates, make sure that things are, you know, as fresh as they possibly can be. So I created a little printable that I'm going to leave down um, below for you guys so you can print it off and use it in your pantry as well. 
it's really simple I just have this area here where you can list everything that you have in your pantry and I have it separated into quarters June September December and March what I plan to do in those months is to go through everything in my inventory check on expiration dates and to write down how many of each item that I have in my pantry I'm going to keep this list on a clipboard inside one of the doors so that I know at a glance what I need to buy so I went ahead and I started my list I still need to go down and do all of my restocking of everything that I just bought and then I'm going to go through and write down how many of each item that I have so be sure to check down below for a link to this free printable I really hope that it works for you so you guys will have to let me know if you print it off and you use it All of my pantry items and small kitchen appliances are kept here in these utility cabinets that we purchased at Lowe's. I think these cabinets originally are intended to be used in the garage area, but they work perfectly down here in the basement. I am not a big fan of open shelving. I much prefer to keep stored items out of sight within cabinets. I like to keep the soft package items in these lidded bins that I shared earlier. Our home backs up to a bird sanctuary, so sometimes during the change of season, we may get a little field mouse or two in the house, and these bins really do keep everything protected. Our next project today is to make labels for each of these bins using my Cricut Explore Air 2. If you are unfamiliar with Cricut, it is an awesome crafting tool that can cut at least a hundred different materials. You can use it to create decor for your home, organizing projects, gifts, the list is just endless. One of my favorite ways to use my Cricut is to label bins and containers and that is what we're going to do now. I've made myself a list of the size of labels that I will need for each different size of container. I also made myself a list of what I am labeling to be sure that I don't miss anything. Now for this project, we will be needing some black and white permanent vinyl and some Cricut transfer tape. To get our project started, we are going to be jumping onto Cricut Design Space. On the homepage here, you will see a bunch of different project ideas that you can create with Cricut Designs. But for our project, we are going to be going into Canvas. So pull down the menu on the left-hand side of your page, click on Canvas, and then click on Images. In the search bar, just type in the word Labels and we'll bring up all of your options. As you can see, you have over 3,000 different label options to choose from. I'm gonna make it really simple for us and choose this black and white version right here. Click on it, upload it to Canvas, and this is where you can change the size of your image to match your project. I have this label set to be about six inches long. Now this one is going to be for one of my baking bins, so I'm going to click on text and in the box that pops up, I'm going to type the word baking. Now Design Space has about 400 different fonts that you can choose from. For our project, I'm just using the Cricut Sans. Now once I have it all fitted within my label, I'm going to be ready to cut. So I'm happy with the way this all looks. I'm going to click on the big green make it button and it will take me over to the cutting screen. Our project is separated into two different cuts, one for the label and one for the title. I'm going to cut both of mine out of black vinyl, but you would be able to use whatever color you wanted. Next, we hit the green continue button at the bottom right of your screen and follow the prompts on your Cricut machine to cut out your labels. Remove the excess vinyl using the Cricut weeding tool if needed. Apply transfer tape to each piece and you are ready to apply to your project. Lost again, going back around. Dreaming of a time when I get things right. Lost in the shadows of a million stars. Shouldn't they Baby. 
I really love these big, easy to read labels. One of the reasons why I wanted these types of labels on the containers was so that not only could everyone find what they were looking for, but everyone can help put away groceries after a big Costco or grocery store run. With everything organized, it did not take me long to unload all of those bags of groceries that I had saved up over the last couple weeks. I moved a lot of things around to better utilize the shelves in the cabinets. This allowed me more room to categorize my canned goods better and allow for growth along the way. I think everything looks nice and neat and organized and well stocked. On the inside of the door, I've hung my pantry list. I went through all of my cans, checked all the expiration dates, and I'm pretty happy I only had to toss one can because it was expired. I recorded the quantity of each item that I have on hand, and I won't have to go through everything again until September. The one big lesson that I have learned doing this project is that our pantries are an individual thing and they should really reflect the meals that we make for our families every week. So I think it's important to take the time and list your family's favorite meals and make your pantry list accordingly. For some it may be important for you to have food supplies on hand that will last you the better part of a year or two, but for me it's really important that I continually use what I have on hand to store what I eat and eat what I store. So thank you all so much for watching today and a big thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video. I will put all the links to the products that I mentioned in the description box down below for you. Join our community over on Facebook and Instagram at My Bashful Life and please don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you all back as part of our YouTube family. So until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have. Be kind to each other, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.